Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We all agree that changes must be made to the structure and regulation of our financial markets. But the changes must be done right. Our financial system and economy will suffer for decades to come. That is why I am deeply concerned about the process surrounding this bill. Yes, we have held several hearings in this committee during the financial crisis, including recent hearings on derivatives and asset-backed securities in the Security Subcommittee chaired by Senator Reid. Those were good hearings. They gave us more questions than answers, and we should be trying to get those answers rather than rushing to legislation. Even more troubling than that is the need for more hearings on the issue is the fact that we have held a total of zero hearings on this bill. At a minimum, we should, be, we should be holding hearings on each title of this bill before moving forward so we can understand the full effects of what is proposed and whether it will even work. Better than that would be to consider multiple ideas on each topic and examine them in details. One thing that is clear is bad monetary policy is at the heart of this crisis. Under Chairman Greenspan, the Fed broke from the Taylor rule and kept interest rates too low for too long, leading to the great asset bubble. So it seems to me the first thing we must address is the Federal Reserve. Mr. Chairman, I strongly support your efforts to focus the Fed on monetary policy by removing their oversight responsibilities and refusing them to give them more power. However, I just as strongly oppose your proposal to change the selection of the regional federal boards. Chairman Bernanke has also already done significant damage to the Fed's independence by acting as an arm of the Treasury, and this proposal would further undermine that independence. You want to turn me off, uh, Mr. Chairman? Is that what it is? Okay. Somebody tried to turn me off, but that's all right. I don't mind. I've been tried to turn off before. Is it, is it Alan Greenspan? I wish he were here to defend himself. The changes will also concentrate even more power in the head, hand of the Fed chair, and lead to more unsound and easy money. It is critical that there is a healthy debate at the Fed and the regional Fed presidents, who are the only voices at the Fed representing everyone who lives and works outside of New York and Washington, have been the voices of restraint in monetary policy. While these are legitimate concerns, that bankers should not choose their own regulators, that concern is addressed by removing oversight from the Fed. Now more than ever, we need federal, regional Feds that will stand up to the chairman, not be a bunch of Bernanke lackeys. All the Fed easy money has to end up somewhere, and for a variety of reasons, it is the greater effect, it has the greatest effect on housing. Eventually, the housing bubble had to end, and when it did, consequences were always going to be severe. But they were made much worse by the bad decisions and policies that must be addressed. First among those is the idea of too big to fail. Companies like Goldman Sachs will always push the limits in their never-ending quest to satisfy their greed as long as they know the taxpayers have their back. Unfortunately, this bill does not end too big to fail. Instead, it creates a permanent bailout power that extends beyond financial companies. That will lead to more Citigroups, Lehman's, AIG, 
not less. There are many other issues that must be addressed. The supervision of banks and other financial firms must be strengthened, and the number of regulators should be reduced. Capital standards must be increased. Off-balance sheets activities must be eliminated. There must be regulation of all derivatives. Unregulated financial companies must be subject to more oversight. Housing finance and the GSEs must be reformed. The credit rating system process must be overhauled. And consumer protection must be strengthened. The Chairman's bill tries to address most of these, and I support a lot of the goals he has set out. But I have some concerns about the way the bill goes about accomplishing these goals. One example is the credit rating agencies. We should reduce reliance on the agencies and enable investors and others to do their own research. Instead, the bill will further increase reliance on these agencies and give them a government seal of approval. Another example is consumer protection. No one has taken the thread to task for their failure to regulate mortgages more than you and I, Mr. Chairman. I think the approach to consumer protection in this bill is dangerously flawed. Consumer protection cannot be separated from the safety and soundness of financial companies. If a product is unsafe for one, it is unsafe for others. We need to strengthen the consumer protection mandate of the federal financial regulators and th hold them accountable rather than creating a new agency that will not understand the whole picture and will undermine the safety and soundness of financial companies. I strongly support removing the Fed's consumer protection role as you have proposed, but the right place to put that responsibility is in a primary mission of the financial regulator. I will not go through each section of the bill, but I do want to make a few more comments. I strongly support more regulation of the, the, the derivatives market, including higher capital standards and more clearing and exchanging exchange trading. But this could be the hardest part of the bill to get right. And I think we need to closely examine the proposals in this bill and other ideas before moving forward. One idea worth considering that came out of the derivatives hearing Senator Reed chaired was a requirement for a visible cash basis for any contract. Many of the security provisions of the bill have not been examined before this committee and will likely lead to higher investor cost without any real benefits. One provision would open the door to more security lawsuits and undermine the chairman's own security litigation reform law. I also do not understand why we should reward the SEC's recent failures with the ability to set its own budget. Before doing anything like that, we should require major reforms and accountability. I am also very concerned that there is nothing in this bill to deal with GSEs and the housing finance. They were at the center of the housing boom and bust, and we cannot truly reform the financial system without including them. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I commend you for attempting to open the Federal Reserve to more transparency and audit some of the Fed's recent actions. I was the sponsor of one of the original Fed audit bills when I was on the Housing Committee in the House of Representatives, so this has been a long-time goal of mine. While the bill needs to go farther, I am glad to see the idea has caught on, and I will be glad to work with you to craft a stronger audit. 
As I said before, I share many of your goals, Mr. Chairman. However, we do not know what the real effect of this bill will be, and I am concerned that parts of it are fundamentally flawed. I cannot support the bill, and I think we should take a step backward and consider each issue, each issue and other possible solutions. That will be a lot of work, but it will be well worth it. Thank you.